And this is the pastel clown female yes. that uh, locked with the male yesterday. And it actually looks like she's just starting to ovulate this morning. Uh, you can see the swelling in the lower third of her body with the tail tucked round in a hook and I've just checked for tail suck and there is a slight V in her belly but it's not significant yet so this could be just the start of her ovulation we'll come back and check later and see how she's getting on Hi guys, it's Rob from Royal Bolt. We're ahead of schedule uh, here in the breeding season. Uh, I have two females that have already ovulated, much to my surprise. Uh, these are the two girls that I showed in my last video that I was keen to get paired up before they actually ovulated, get in those last critical locks. And as you'll see in this video, I managed to do that uh, between 24 and 48 hours before they actually ovulated. So how's that for fine tuning? So today uh, we're going to, surprisingly, at this stage in my season, be doing the ovulation special. I've got some ovulations to show you. Uh, I want to talk about what ovulations are, uh, how they work, what's happening inside your snake, and what you can expect from your females once ovulation has occurred. So let's get after it. And we rested the male lemon blast for 24 hours and put him in with the spot nose. I just put him in two seconds ago and he's gone straight to work, uh, straight on top of the female spot nose. And hopefully later today we'll get a lock from them too. This is the female that's been off food for three weeks. Great stuff. Okay guys, I'm back a little earlier than I anticipated. It has been only 24 hours since I paired up ARP Constrictor's Pastel Clown to the Leopard Lemon Blast. And we have an ovulation. You can see, let me just take the camera off so you can see. You can see this portion of the body here has the classic swallowed a coke bottle look. It is much, much thicker than the rest of her body. Uh, the swelling starts around about here and continues all the way down to here. And you can see that the tail is hooked round. The tail is actually being drawn up. And if we take a quick peek underneath there, she is a big girl, uh, but you can see the inverted V along her belly there. Not particularly pronounced in this girl, so it may yet develop, and I'll come back and have a look at that. In, but um, this looks like my first ovulation. And my last pairing was right on schedule. Uh, just 24 hours before this ovulation. So uh, fantastic news. So I'll be doing part five of my breeder series a little bit sooner than I anticipated. Looks like we have our first ovulation. And the second girl paired up yesterday. That hasn't eaten for a month now. Let's get a look at her. There you can see the big swelling through here, the tail hooked around. And I believe this is just the start of her ovulation. We'll come back later today and just confirm that. But uh, right on cue. This is pretty awesome. Okay, this is about 12 hours later and this girl has got even bigger. You can see the huge uh, distortion in the midsection there, how swollen this girl is. And the uh, hook tail, very characteristic, she has a very deep V in her tail. Um, classic tail suck. 
connector from the other side so you can actually see now this girl has a clearly visible ovulation that's awesome and the other girl that ovulated yesterday just so that you can see the ovulation has now totally disappeared and she's doing exactly what she was before the ovulation started she's curled up under the paper doing absolutely nothing and so you can see that um, the ovulation lasts only 24 hours and all sign of the ovulation has disappeared apart from if I can capture this for you let me just get a profile on her back I don't know whether you can see that very pronounced spinal ridge you can just make that out there that is a a sign that she has ovulated if you look higher in her body she doesn't have that spinal ridge and as you come down the body there we start to see the spinal ridge all the way down to the tail that spinal ridge is caused by the eggs which are now in the oviduct pushing up on the spine from the inside a sure sign that this girl has ovulated So there you go, that's how long an ovulation lasts, about 24 hours or so. All signs of it have disappeared, she's just nesting down underneath the paper as she was before the ovulation started. What has your female been doing for these last six months prior to ovulation? Well first of all, ovulation as it is in humans is the time that the eggs are actually fertilised, but unlike humans it's the last step in the process of breeding snakes as opposed to the first step in humans. Uh, what happens in humans is every 28 days a single cell is produced from the ovary and the ovum travels down the fallopian tube and hopefully meets a male sperm along the way and if it is fertilized it embeds itself in the wall of the uterus and is then nourished via a placenta for the next nine months while cell division occurs. So in the human reproductive cycle uh, the follicles are extremely small, they can be generated once every 28 days and fertilization of the expelled ovum is actually the start of the process in the human breeding cycle. Snakes are very different to that uh, because they're going to lay eggs uh, the last thing that happens in this process is the ovulation and fertilization. Ovulation is the time that the eggs are fertilized in just the same way as they are with humans but very shortly after that the female will lay her eggs and cell division occurs outside of her body and no further nourishment is provided to the offspring other than what is carried in the egg. So for the last six months or so the ovaries in the female have not just been developing follicles which are a pin sized single celled ovum but she has been packaging those follicles in nutrients which are going to form the contents of the egg when they're laid she has to package that ovum with sufficient nutrients to get it through its egg incubation and to form those baby snakes so unlike humans at the start of the process is when the follicles start to grow and that's when she's going to eat the most food and pack those follicles with the nutrients they need. The last stage in this process which we're going to see today is the actual ovulation and the ovulation itself the uh, follicle is expelled but unlike a human where it's a single celled pinhead sized follicle in snakes they ovulate at 45 millimeters these things are golf ball sized and the reason for that is that all the nutrients that the developing egg is going to need when it is expelled from the female have to be contained within those follicles before the female ovulates. So she has spent the last six months eating like crazy and building all the nutrients that are needed to package up those multiple follicles which are going to be expelled from the ovaries at about 45 millimeter size. 
Those eggs are fertilised as they are expelled from the ovaries as she ovulates um, but very soon after that she is going to lay eggs. She will undergo a hormonal change as all animals do when they ovulate. That hormonal change will uh, make her shed within about 14 days and then 30 days after that she's going to lay the eggs. Uh, the eggs travel into the oviduct and are not supported by the female in any way after that fertilization has occurred. The oviduct is simply a muscular tube and a shell forms around the egg before they're expelled uh, but that's about it and that's why it, we pair our snakes up six months before they actually ovulate. This stimulates the fem female to grow her follicles. Now another major difference in snakes versus humans or mammals in general, uh, mammals tend to be fairly gregarious animals. Her hormonal changes are what uh, stimulates the male uh, to actually breed with her at exactly the right moment to fertilize the eggs. So usually within a couple of days of ovulation those hormonal changes will um, induce males to breed with her and the sperm in mammals will only survive inside her body for three or four days around the time of ovulation and that's when uh, the male must be present and must actually breed with the female in order to fertilize the eggs. Not so in snakes. Snakes are not gregarious animals. They live mostly solitary lives and a female will meet with a male only very rarely and since it takes her six months to grow her follicles um, and she's put a great deal of effort into that it's too big a risk to expect a male to be around at just the right moment to mate with her when she ovulates. So snakes have evolved to solve that issue as well. She will mate with a male a long time before she ovulates and she will store that sperm in case she doesn't meet a male again and she will use that stored sperm which she keeps alive inside her body she will use that stored sperm just at the exact moment of ovulation in order to fertilize the eggs so she doesn't actually need a male to be around. What we try to do when we breed these animals of course is to get in those last locks before she ovulates so that she's got the freshest strongest sperm available rather than the stale stored stuff that she might be using uh, and that's why we like to keep pairing our snakes up until ovulation to give them the best chance of the highest fertility but it isn't actually necessary female snakes will often store sperm for up to a year which um, humans can't do and breeders will keep records of what their snakes have bred with in previous years just in case they get a surprise clutch which bears no resemblance to the snake that they've been breeding her to. And the reason for that is that she may actually have used sperm that is a year old from a previous pairing in preference to the male that has been used this season. And that is not unheard of in ball pythons. It is unusual. Um, doesn't happen often but it just shows that snakes are actually capable of it. So that's a major difference between mammalian uh, reproductive cycles and what we do for our snakes and that's what we've been doing over the last six months. Pairing up our snakes and feeding our females well is to get them to do all the hard work prior to ovulating as opposed to humans who do all the hard work after the ovulation. So let's take a look at an ovulation, uh, what it is, how to recognize it and what's going on inside your snake while she is ovulating. I'm going to use some footage that I shot last season. Um, some of you may have seen this before on Predator BP channel uh, but the footage is just as relevant and just as good today as it was at this time last year. But it is not the same snake that we saw earlier in this video from this season. It is actually a different snake. Here we have a girl that is ovulating right now. Uh, you can see that she's swollen all the way down here. Uh, quite a large swelling here. She's struggling to bend in the middle. And we have, you can see underneath, the classic tail suck here. This V down the tail 
that is classic tail suck during ovulation. So what's actually happening during ovulation? Well, in a snake there's not a great deal of room. Um, we have the digestive system that runs down the snake here and the female, the female has two sets of ovaries which start about here and run down here. This is where the follicles start to develop and the oviduct is also alongside the ovaries. There are two oviducts that run one down each side and join onto the cloaca down here. So you can see that in this portion of the snake here we've got the ovaries, we've got the oviduct and we've got the digestive system and as I said there isn't a great deal of room in here so no wonder as the, uh, the follicles develop in the ovaries the female stops eating because it actually constricts the digestive system. So what's happening right now and what causes this swelling is that as the female ovulates, the ovaries run here, the ovum or unfertilized eggs, I hope she's not going to bite me now, uh, have to move up the snake to the opening of the oviduct which is here and then move down into the oviduct in preparation for laying. So what we have are unfertilized ovum moving up, passing by fertilized eggs moving down and that's why you get this big swelling because we've got ovum and eggs moving past each other so it has to swell up to accommodate and in order to accommodate the eggs the oviduct that runs through here is pulled up and open to receive the fertilized eggs in this portion of the snake here. So as the oviduct is pulled up and open because it's attached down at the bottom end it tends to pull or stretch the snake in this portion here so it looks like a vacuum has been applied. So you can see the extreme swelling in the female here her oviduct is pulled up and open to receive the eggs up here about halfway down her body so when she does that it stretches down to the tail end of the snake and actually sucks it up because the oviduct is actually being pulled up all the way up here and pulled open imagine opening a sock to put your foot into it that's what's happening right now so we get the swelling through here but we get the tail suck at the bottom almost as if a vacuum has been applied to the tail because the oviduct is actually being pulled up the length of the snake here and opening up at this end to receive the eggs that then sit inside the oviduct after they've been fertilized. This is where they're being fertilized right now. It's fertilized eggs that are passing down into the oviduct and the oviduct is just a muscular tube that attaches down to the cloaca and this is where the fertilized eggs will be stored for the next six weeks um, as she ovulates it'll be about two weeks now before she goes into her prelay shed and about 30 days after that she will lay eggs so that's ovulation so what can you expect from your female now that she has ovulated uh, well the hormonal changes of ovulation means that she will shed in about 14 days and that's known as the prelay shed and 30 days after that she will lay eggs. The significant change for your female now is that she is no longer building follicles, she has ovulated, the eggs have been fertilized and cell division has now started to occur. And this is actually part of the incubation period. Prior to the eggs being laid the initial cell division takes place and that initial uh, blood vein network inside the eggs that we always check when the eggs are laid is actually starting to happen right now inside the female before she lays the eggs. The eggs are not attached to the female, they're now being supplied by nutrients from the follicles that she grew over those last six months or so. And so your female, because she is actually now incubating uh, rather than building follicles, will no longer be cool seeking and she will seek higher temperatures. She's also still not eating of course and so she will tend to be extremely lazy. So for the next six weeks or so she will probably just sit at the back of the tub over a hot spot and do nothing. And that will change 
uh, just a few days prior to her laying eggs. But we'll deal with that in the next episode. And the next episode will also cover uh, incubating eggs, setup techniques, and how to get your incubator running and keeping it stable. Don't forget, the rest of my collection are still building, some of them are still eating, and we still have to keep pairing. So this, these two girls here are about done, and in six weeks' time we'll have eggs, but the rest of my collection is still in the build phase, and we still need to be breeding our males to them so that they have the freshest sperm available when they go on to ovulate as well. If we take a look at the female that ovulated a couple of days ago, you can see at the back of the tub there she's now migrated underneath all the paper. So she's right at the very back, tucked up underneath all the layers of paper. She's hiding as much as she possibly can and she'll stay there for the next six weeks. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we've got some ovulations in nice and early which is a great start over here in Royal Balls. And from the questions that I've been getting in this series, I think I'm going to offer some tips to all you first-time breeders. The number of questions and the variety of subjects that, that I get uh, during the breeding season from first-time breeders is uh, pretty much covering the whole spectrum of breeding. What would be my advice to first-time breeders who are perhaps learning this as they go along? We need to focus on just the basics. When you start breeding ball pythons, yes, do your research, yes, observe your snakes, yes, uh, learn to recognise all of these signs. But when you start, there are two things that you need to do. Feed your snakes, pair your snakes. If you do those two things, the snakes themselves will sort out the rest for you and you do not need to worry about it. Of course, it's nice if you can recognise the signs, but it's not essential. Uh, nature will always find a way and the snakes will do it for you. So don't worry if you don't recognize some of these things. Don't wonder what you should and should not be doing, whether your snakes are doing the right thing or whether they're not. Feed them, pair them and watch what happens. Especially when it comes to ovulations, uh, many new keepers uh, will worry that they miss an ovulation and I think um, as you've seen today, once you see an ovulation, it's actually very hard to miss. Uh, but if you do, um, no big deal. She will go on to lay eggs. And let your snakes teach you what the signs are and what their breeding cycle is. Good luck, guys. See you next time.